hello guys. So uh, now that we have uh, cloned our repository, let's just uh, go through the files and see. Just let's navigate. Okay, that's a good user. Okay, let's open this one here. We can open a new terminal. Let's just uh, give privileges to this user. Okay. Okay, so those are the files which are inside uh, our folder. So manage.py, requirement, and the database, SQL3, our courses, this is the application courses, that's the media, that's all the documents, uh, media folder, that's the that's the site, that's the one I've been setting up PY, pages, so the different apps, the statics, so all the static files and the templates. That's how it is organized. And the users, also represented by an app called user. Manage.py is going to be the, the center. So that's um, the folder having managed the py that's from where we're gonna actually launch the application so today we're gonna try to launch this application after you have cloned it you're gonna get some troubles and uh, there's a requirement requirements.txt so that's a file listing all the packages required to be installed so sometimes it doesn't work because it's been a while and uh, some packages are outdated or they're submitting uh, packages. So you have to check and read through the, the error written in red, like now. So it's talking about what uh, about PsychoPG2, I think. Yes, so PsychoPG2. So it's suggesting us also to um, install a Psycho PG2 binary. So the other one, we're gonna try to install it. So pip install Psycho PG2 dash binary. We get the error, the same error again. So if you prefer to avoid building Psycho PG2 from source, please install the py. Okay, so just let's see. That's the right one. That's the right one, the binary. So, let's explain this. So, we are going to use Psycho, Psycho PG2. Okay. Binary. If you get issues with the installation of the Psycho PG2, just the normal one. This is um, like an interpreter. It just make the link between uh, Python and uh, SQL. So we need this in between, otherwise they can't communicate. And we won't be able to write anything to the database. 
so it's still pretty red there's a lot of errors but we are just gonna try to find a way so this one is not installed so doing a psycho pg2 dash dash version uh, should be showing actually uh, that it's installed so we don't have it here Should we maybe change the requirements txt So we're gonna try to put the binary instead of the Psycho PG2, the one that was initially here with the version. Maybe the version is not good. We're gonna see what's going on. Okay. So let's retry to reinstall the requirements. If it gets red again, we might use internet now just to search for the error. So, ah, I didn't uh, record it. So, make sure you always save your changes, otherwise, uh, it won't be uh, installing anything, it won't be taking into consideration your changes. So, now we're gonna do that. Gonna save requirements that txt. I don't have the permission, so I had to uh, actually raise the permissions to be able to save it. I need to find a solution for this permission thing because I created a new user. And um, something going wrong about the the setting of my user and the permissions. Okay, so now we have installed everything from the requirements.txt. There's a lot of warnings. We need to install will. Okay, this for sure is already installed. It's good. I'm just making sure that everything is installed properly. Now let's install uh, Postgres because later on we will be actually uh, swapping the, the database, the SQL tree to uh, SQLite tree to Postgres. Okay, pip install Postgres. So. We are also going to try to install the Postgres database. So Django comes natively. So Django is the framework we're using. It's a Python framework comes natively with a SQLite tree database. So if you want to push it to production, one day you might need uh, something more solid. So more robust database or even Just a more robust database. Oh yes, cloud base also. Database. Like uh, yes, AWS S3 from Amazon. Okay. 
team. So now I'm gonna try to run this and see how it looks like because uh, just went into Google and just uh, search for a random um, platform to deploy so um, online courses platform went to github so now let's see if we can run it after having cloned it need to migrate database to uh, SQL tree SQL tree I don't know how they call it, but yeah. Then we launch the server. Lastly, we'll, yeah, we'll browse. We'll just go in our browser and into the local host on port 8000 normally. the database later on to Postgres <coughs> so we want to see how it looks like first so before making any change we just want to run it and see how it looks like before uh, doing uh, before changing the, the database or anything else we just want to see how it looks like so you can try several different uh, uh, projects and uh, find the one that you prefer and after decide to change the database for Postgres one because that's the one you want to push to production later on. So manage that py, we're in the right folder. So always do a ls, make sure you're in the right folder. This. Oh no, Python to be manage py make migrations. Oh. From dot env import load dot env setting the py. Okay, so there's a package to uh, handle the all the environment variables so I might need to install it we find again a nice red screen showing us errors so I'll try to install it during just uh, using the pip so pip install.env but it didn't work so it might be um, something else we're just gonna try to see if it is uh, suggested sometimes if you read the error inside you get the line the line suggesting you how to install it giving you the right command so i'm just going to read through to see if i find it and if you don't find it look at what i'm doing you just go into google so django install.env you go into the documentation so it's not called .env it's called python Dash dot env. So now we can do our pip install python dash dot env. And now we get the installation is done. Telling you to bind the path. Let's do the migrations. Doesn't work because we didn't set any environment variable on the one that we need. Is the secret key. So here it says secret key settings must not be empty so you can do export secret key equal and have to just um, just add a random secret key so here the the, the goal is just to, to launch the application
So I'm just trying to find settings.py. Go through. Let's see uh, where does it here. That's where we have the secret key. You see, secret key equal os get env and secret key should be uh, set. And now we're gonna set it. Export secret underscore key equal. I'm gonna call it. Let's call it uh, random. Just a random key. Random secret key. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is done. So we just need to source the bash and C folder. So that we keep this uh, secret key. So Python 3 image.py migrate. Good, so now we can run the server. Just some explanation really quickly. So, is the center, is the place uh, where you are uh, going to find all the experience second line so you can see it, all the parameters. website here we had um, an error telling us that the secret key secret key can't be empty We need to set an environment variable and set it. So we just need to set an environment variable. After we choose to set it for a random uh, key keyword, random string. For the purpose of this tutorial, real, but it is a security. For the application, so it's called security. So nobody should know about it. And uh, it has to be a little bit more complicated than just writing random secret key one two three four five. So just to generate a key which is uh, long enough, your application safe. Create the environment variable. After we just did source bash RC. Then you source the file dot dash rc put the variable to be persistent just to keep 
keep it recording. So there's the command source chassis and you launch. So that's what we're gonna do now. Just after that, then launch the application Python 3 with this command manage.py run server So the issues that we had before is so when we migrated the database, so we had some issues because it was uh, it was empty and. We were also asked to, uh, to install missing packages like .env. So .env wasn't in the requirement that txt that we uh, installed before. So that's what's gonna happen to you every time you're gonna try to install something. There are some directions but there's always a little fix to do on the side so um, just prepare yourself to that and um, use internet to search so what we're gonna do, we're gonna run the command after when we run the command python3 manage.py run server will be given um, address location where we can actually go using our browser let's go back to the terminal so let's do python3 manage.py run server Good. You see, we have an IP address 127.0.0.1, which is the same as localhost, and the port, some port 8000. So, server is ready at this port, so we can navigate to this port. Or localhost. It's the same as localhost uh, 8000. So let's see how it looks like. localhost you may need to add localhost to allow the hosts let's copy the error what is good is that uh, the error just tell us what to do so it's pretty uh, clear get the error this one here so that's what We've been told because we uh, played it smart and uh, didn't use the the IP address 127.0.0.1 and write it down localhost on port 8000. But if you want to do that, you have to make sure that uh, in setting.py, actually there's a place where you can allow different hosts. So we downloaded this, um, we cloned this repository from GitHub. There, there are already some allowed hosts, but we need to add uh, the ones for the, to, to be able to run it locally. 
that is where you are going to set your URL at the end to allow the application to be served in your domain. So that's where you can also add your domain name actually and you get it running in production. Let's do that. So what is good is that Tango errors are very informative as you can see. But super. So let's go to this setting.py file. Here a load host, you see it has been uh, deployed on Heroc example and we will just gonna make sure that this localhost I'm just gonna add localhost at the end you see this 127.001 just added localhost to it as a string so it's a list of strings so I can't save it I'm just gonna open another terminal and try to get the permission of all these folders didn't set it properly at the beginning so permission denied just gonna need maybe to search in internet how to so ch mod the whole folder no this doesn't work also. Okay, so I'm not finding by myself how to uh, set the permission properly because I don't want to be uh, setting permission for each files. I want to just be able to change whatever I want and get it to be uh, so changing permission so chmod 777 is not this that's not the command so the command should be uh, chmod dash r like capital R and after there is uh, execution read and I have to find it I just don't remember it So when it's like that, what do you do? Go to your internet browser and you search for it. So that's what we're gonna do. Just try last. last uh, Last chance before I'm just gonna go back to it. Ch mod. Maybe I should have used the help command. Oh. No, doesn't work. Okay. So you have to be very patient when you have those kind of errors. You don't know how to handle it. And you don't want to search. So you see the example here, you're gonna stay a while without finding the solution. So here I could uh, actually do it without searching. But I might need to fix this later on. So let's create a super user. Now the server is running. We need to set a super user to be able to navigate to the admin page and to see how the app has been made actually without 
making it too difficult looking at the models and uh, the views, the URLs. Maybe you don't know about all of those things, but having a graphical interface, seeing um, what are the tables, it's, I found it easier, so that's what we're gonna do. So Python 3 manage.py create super user. That's the command we're gonna use. It's good. Python 3, so there's a little typo. Let's fix it. to be in the right directory, otherwise it's not going to work. He's asking me again for the secret key that I had said before. So I think this is linked to my uh, issue with recording having the permissions to uh, on certain files I'm just gonna stop the server and um, create the super user okay Seasons as a username, as a password, as everything. We're just gonna pass all of the rest. Let's put a Gmail account, let's put this bypass, yes. Okay, so now can we accept to the Need to run the server again just to be able to exit to the admin page. So you just add admin at the end. Localhost port 8000 slash admin. That's where you're gonna find the admin page. Now we can log in here. That's how I called it. That's good. Same password. So that's the um, URL to login as an admin. So when creating a super user, make sure that you are in the directory where manage.py is located. Just get errors because you're not in the right uh, directory. So just writing it down like that, <laughs> it's a good way also to to learn and to uh, to learn from your mistakes actually. So that's what happened to me before. So for example, it happens to me before. I was in the right directory, so I couldn't uh, create the super user. So I thought it was a permission or anything else, but no. I also have, yes, some issues with the permission, but I've created, using a have permissions, so I need to fix that. I'm gonna try to fix it now. 
Ubuntu. That's my Ubuntu. User permissions in this folder. So that's the one. That's the one I was looking for. chmod dash r after I don't remember a plus r w x. So write, uh, read, write, and execute all the permissions. And the R is to say append, maybe R, just to add those permissions. So we'll have to stop the server or open a second terminal, enter this command. So I'm just going to stop the server, enter the command, sudo chmod dash R, A plus, read, write execute on the folder just put the path to that folder for this user so it should work from now on as you can see on VS Studio on the left side in front of each folder or file there's a small M I mean a capital M that means not, I have the permission on it to be able to, to change it. Otherwise, I will need to provide permission on each single file. That's what I don't want to do. So now this problem is fixed. I can keep going. That's how you can see actually the tables when you're in the admin page. You can see the groups, users, content. Let's go back. Is the server running? No, the server is not running. So I have to make sure the server is running first. And after now we can access this page. So are the groups user, user groups, so there's tables, courses, homework, tests, homework submission, everything is empty, so we can try to fill it with some data, just to, uh, just to see how it is, so just let me see if I can go in the website, that's where the website is, you see, I'm logged in as an admin, so that's how it looks like. Finally, we got it. So it's a little app. Thanks, Kudeling, so did one. No, so this one here we, we can't access for the moment, because the root hasn't been, uh, hasn't been created. I'm just gonna browse through and see uh, what's going on. Homework, test, homework, new homework. You can enter some data. Math exercise, for example, that's the homework. I know that you really liked doing mathematics. So, choose mathematics, practice, the tour, I don't know if you know the tour, having two holes, so that's the practice, perfect, you see how I'm good at doing that, that's the instructions, you can put a date, like a deadline. You just save it. Now, when you go in math exercises, 
Let me put that one here on the instructions. Okay. Test. Okay, this is just to navigate through and to see how, how, uh, how the app is. So whenever you clone your repository, you uh, install all the requirements, you run the server, you navigate into the application, like now, you use an admin uh, account to be able to do uh, all the critical uh, changes. After that, <coughs> you'll be able to focus on the code and customize uh, the website where you want, you want it to be. So I used, the, I used actually the web page to add some uh, different data, but you can use it. You can use also the admin page. Like for example, here I can add user if I want, student. Now we have one extra student that you see how is written user object. You can actually uh, make it look a little bit better than that. This is just uh, the Django model which is showing uh, the student like that. I have another one, citizens. Those are the ones which are already part of the application. Fang Tang. Okay. More. So we could run the application now we're just browsing through looking at uh, what works what doesn't because it doesn't mean that uh, everything works you might need to actually explore it more to know what are the limitations of the application so you don't you know how better implement your your ideas okay that's how they have set it that the course we've seen on the website before. So we can add extra users if you want. Instructor one. We have to follow the rules for the password. Can't be similar, has to be eight characters. Can't be a commonly used password and uh, can't be entirely numeric. So here the user was instructor one, but he did a typo or something like that, but it became C. So we have a user called C, who is an instructor. It's a math mathematics. That is a course, course description, a nice headache for you, for your brain, just for you, okay, some nice headaches for you, I think that's a nice description for mathematics, alright, we save it. need to log out maybe but you can see here we have a uh, mat the cross so we've added that using the admin page so let's try to find the models the models is uh, the python tables the Python classes, which uh, actually are, are using, are, are being actually uh, changed into uh, SQL tables. So they form the architecture. 
the architecture of our application. And uh, for me, there was something missing, which is the. Uh, in, just let me see, maybe they put it in. So here we have the test class. Those are the tables you see. Test the users. Here. This one. You see, it's commented out. But we missed the table for the instructor, actually. So. You can put a comment on the top. Instructors are missing. So you see, we didn't see any table for instructors, but uh, you need students and you need instructors also in the, in the application. It can't be just the students. So missing in our website. But actually, they uh, they put it as commented, so we can add it later, which is good. You don't need to do everything from scratch. This is class handling that will be commented out okay so you see we have to go through uh, different troubles different troubles because uh, your environment is not set well like for me the permissions had uh, several issues with the permissions and um, you need to use Google also to search for the errors, be able to read uh, through the documentation pretty quickly to find the right information. And um, what we're gonna do next, uh, we're gonna change the database. Yes, or we're just gonna change it for a Postgres database. Hope you enjoyed. Um, you enjoyed and you're gonna practice and send me the links of your your projects. <laughs>